I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Galgun games, but it's a series that I quite enjoy. They're essentially just on-rail shooters with heavy doses of anime fan service. It's funny then that those games would receive a spin-off in the form of Grim Guardians, a side-scrolling action game which follows the rules of what most people would know as a Metroidvania. I have to say, I've never really been a fan of this style of game, having never played a single Metroid or Castlevania game before. Having said that, I don't exactly dislike them either, I've just never played them or given them much thought. Being such a big fan of Galgun was actually the catalyst that made me want to review this specific game and to finally give the genre a proper try. In doing so, I've discovered two things about myself. The first being that I kinda like this style of game, and the second being that I'm really quite bad at them. It was pretty cool to see the characters in another setting, and I think the gameplay here is solid, not that I'm an expert on the subject. I did definitely find some aspects of the combat to be frustrating, but that may be because I'm completely new to this kind of thing. I'm sure that most Metroidvania veterans would breeze through the game without much issue. In the end, I do think it's a good game, although it is a very unexpected one. I really do like the retro-inspired pixel art graphics, and despite me being really bad at the combat, the combat system itself seems well put together, and I was able to find some fun in it. So what is Grim Guardian's Demon Purge? Well, as I mentioned previously, it's a Metroidvania spin-off of the Galgun series. It features characters and callbacks from across all of the Galgun games, but the main theme focuses on the Kamizono sisters from Galgun Double Piece, the second game in the series. As you can see from the gameplay, it's a 2D side-scrolling action platformer which clearly takes its visual inspiration from the older Castlevania games and perhaps from something like Splatterhouse. You play as Shinobu and Maya Kamizono, two demon-hunting sisters who attend school by day and hunt demons by night. At the beginning of the game, the sisters return to school after a recent mission, only to find that it's been twisted and transformed into some kind of demonic castle. It's up to them to purge the demons, uncover the truth, and return things to the way they should be. You'll take control of both sisters, although only one of them can be active at a time. Shinobu, the older sister, has higher HP and excels at long-range combat using her demon-slaying submachine gun, although it does need to be reloaded from time to time. The younger sister, Maya, on the other hand, has less HP, but is very strong up close and can use technical skills for exploration. You can swap between the sisters at any time with a single press of a button, so if one of them takes a little bit too much damage, you can swap them out and keep them safe until you find a healing item. If one of the sisters happens to get knocked out, the surviving sibling will be forced to retreat to your last checkpoint. Then, she'll have to make it to where the other sister was down to revive her. On the casual setting, you have unlimited continues, but on harder difficulties, having both sisters knocked out will cost you a life, and when they're all gone, it's game over. As you progress through the game, each of the two characters will unlock various sub-weapons that can be used in battle by spending weapon points. Weapon points are accumulated by picking up purple potion bottles that drop frequently as you fight and break objects in the levels. The amount that you have can be seen below the sister's HP gauges, and each use of the sub-weapon requires a set amount of these points. If you don't have enough stored weapon points, you simply cannot use the sub-weapon. Holding down one of the shoulder buttons gives you access to a weapon wheel that lets you select which sub-weapon you'd like to equip. You can also tap the button to cycle through them if you prefer. Occasionally, you'll be able to find item drops that increase your purge gauge, which is the thin purple bar that you see under the character's HP gauges. Once full, you can unleash a powerful super attack, which is only referred to in the game as a lethal shot. You are completely invincible while performing this attack, and it deals heavy damage to any enemy, including bosses. Exploration of the castle is split into different stages, each with an increasingly tough boss at the end. At the start of each stage, you'll actually have the option to revisit any of the other stages that you've previously cleared. This allows you to look for secrets and rescue some of the random girls that you might have missed on your first time through. As usual, I really don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say that a single playthrough won't be enough to beat the game. This is absolutely not a roguelike game, but for narrative reasons, you will need to ascend the Demonic Castle multiple times, with each playthrough adding new story beats, characters, enemies, and giving you access to areas that you couldn't explore before. The first playthrough really is just an extended tutorial that helps ease you into the game and unlock the sisters' first abilities. 
At the start of your second run, you'll actually be introduced to a couple of minor systems that aren't available in the first run. I can't really show you how these work because it would spoil some of the character reveals, but among other things, you can accept side quests from certain NPCs, fast travel to any stage that you like, and also give items to another NPC to increase the power and potency of your sub-weapons. In short, the game really begins with the second playthrough. Other than that, there really isn't too much else to talk about. The game does feature local co-op with each player controlling one of the two sisters, but there's no online co-op to speak of. Surprisingly, the game does include some English voiceover. Unfortunately, the conversations that you see playing out with the character portraits and the text are not voiced in English, but you do hear the character speak a lot during combat. I'm playing this on a PlayStation 5, and as you can see, the pixels are nice and sharp and it runs at a solid 60 FPS. The frame rate option is actually greyed out in my options menu, and I can only assume that's because I'm playing the dedicated PS5 version. It's also worth noting that I had zero crashes or issues with the game on a technical level. Grim Guardians Demon Purge will be available digitally on February 23rd, 2023 for literally every platform, including Xbox and PC. It will not be a full-priced release. You will actually be able to get physical copies and collector's editions at a later date, but only for PS4, PS5 and Nintendo Switch when they become available. So, what did I think of the game overall? Well, as I mentioned during the intro, I think it's a well-constructed video game. I know a lot of folks don't really care for pixel graphics and, you know, that's completely understandable, but I personally do like them. It really makes me think of the classic Castlevania games from its visuals alone, and that's coming from someone who hasn't even played any of those games. I will admit that when you consider the origins of these characters, a spin-off in this style feels very random, but it kind of works. Especially for someone like me, as I knew exactly who the sisters were and what they were all about. It's just cool to see them doing their thing, because you don't see a lot of that in the actual Galgun games. As I said before, I found the gameplay to be a bit frustrating for pretty much the entire first run, and that's not the game's fault. I've been playing video games for 30 years now, and I've never sat down to properly play these side-scrolling action games, let alone get good at them. I mean, you might remember that I played Wife Quest a while back, a little-known indie game that I suppose could be considered similar to Grim Guardians. So I guess if you count that, Wife Quest was my only other exposure to this genre. Funnily enough, I mentioned how difficult and frustrating that game was as well, with the bosses being particularly punishing. In my experience, I found Grim Guardians to be quite a bit easier than Wife Quest overall, so that's probably something to consider. I will just say though, I'm not adverse to difficulty at all. I've said this many times before, but I've played, beaten, and loved all of the Souls games, including Elden Ring. I've played them all multiple times, plus all of their DLC, and at this point, I'm rather in tune with them, and I don't even find them that difficult. Being quite new and unfamiliar with Metroidvanias, though, means that I simply don't yet have the skill set required to competently play them. That said, I have absolutely improved and things really started to click during my second run. Every single thing that you do in the game, like movements, actions, attacks, abilities, and even positioning matters, and it matters on an enemy-to-enemy -enemy basis. The sisters have unique combat kits that allow them to do a lot of different things, but they rely on each other for specific actions. For a quick example, there might be a small, low-to-the-ground enemy who can be shot by Shinobu if she crouches. However, there might then be a slightly smaller enemy who she can't hit no matter how hard she tries. So, you'd have to switch to Maya who can crouch and attack low with her origami blade. There's also the fact that Shinobu can't attack upwards, at least not at first, but by the time you start your second run, she can, making airborne enemies much easier to deal with. Each enemy requires a little bit of thought to take down, especially on the higher difficulties. And when they start throwing enemies of different types at you at the same time, it becomes somewhat of a combat puzzle. You're always trying to avoid their attacks while positioning yourself to deal with the threats properly. You have a tool for every job, but it's developing the skill to use them correctly without getting hit that takes time, practice, and patience. Now, I'm not a professional, but I was able to beat bosses such as Slave Knight Gale and the Elden Beast on my first try in other games, but let me tell you, the bosses in Grim Guardians are no joke. There were a few that took me uh, many more attempts than I'd actually want to admit. There are so many boss attacks that you can only avoid in one specific way, and if you're not prepared for that, you will get hit and there's nothing you can do about it. This kind of thing can really throw you off of your combat rhythm and screw up the entire fight if you're not careful or paying attention. You really need to learn exactly what the bosses can do and when they can do it. You also need to know how to properly avoid their attacks and abilities correctly because at times it will feel like nowhere is safe. That's never actually the case though. 
As I said before, you do have the right tools for the job, it's just about learning when and how to use them. As I mentioned, I'm not an expert on this genre, far from it actually, so I decided to do some research and look up other popular titles to see what they contain and what the fans usually enjoy. I did this so that I could better understand the game itself and of course the audience that it's made for. I looked at Symphony of the Night, Bloodstained, Wonder Labyrinth, Metroid Dread and a few others and going on what I've read, I think I could recommend Grim Guardians. It seems to have a lot of the elements that fans of the classics would enjoy and that includes the difficulty. There's only two settings available at first which are casual and veteran. I actually played on casual due to, you know, everything I mentioned before, but I still found it challenging to say the least. I also really don't have much negative to say about it. I mean, I like how it looks, I like how it plays, and being the kind of game that it is, there isn't, you know, a thousand systems to learn. So yeah, all around I quite enjoyed this one. I guess I would have liked to have had all the conversations between the characters fully voiced instead of just battle cries, but I kind of get why they didn't do that. The only other thing I wish it had that it doesn't is loot drops, level ups, and equipment, like you'd find in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I'm actually tempted to pick that game up and give it a try after playing this, so if you guys have played that one, let me know what you think of it. Also, while we're on the subject, if you have any other Metroidvania recommendations, please do leave those in the comments section down below. I think Grim Guardians may have actually been a good entry point into the series for me personally, and I'd genuinely like to see what else is out there. In my opinion, Grim Guardians Demon Purge is a solid 2D action title that looks cool and plays well, although this is coming from someone with limited experience with Metroidvanias, so a pinch of salt may be required. I enjoyed the process of learning the game and sometimes there's nothing better than finding that point in a game where everything clicks and you finally get it. I'm still not an expert by any means, but after some initial irritation, I ended up really enjoying this one and I'm actively looking to play more games of this type. Ultimately, Grim Guardians looks to be a perfectly good game to me, but I suppose its finer details would be best assessed by a veteran of the genre. From the point of view of a new player though, I really think this is a fun game. You just have to be willing to learn and play the game the way it's meant to be played. I do understand that this is a niche game and you'd be forgiven for passing it up. However, if you're in the mood for a new game of this type that isn't too expensive, Grim Guardians may just be worth a look. If you enjoyed this particular video, I hope you'll consider subscribing for more. Don't worry, subscribing is completely free, but it really helps to grow the channel. If you'd like to help support what I do, then please check out the first link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.